Hi church, Pastor Joe here. Back in church, we're getting ready to video our Sunday morning worship service for May 10th. Um, hope you're all doing well. You're on my mind and on my heart a lot. And we continue to pray for you. Uh, much, much for us to be prayerful about. I want to ask that you continue to uh, join together in prayer for Brother Ernie Smith and his wife Anna Jane and their entire family. They, they need our prayers and uh, let's go to God on their behalf. I'm also thinking about David Hines, uh, Paul Compton's son-in-law. Uh, he's in the hospital and he's been diagnosed with uh, cancer and we need to pray for him and pray for his wife Cindy. They have a son Caleb, uh, daughter Raven, and a granddaughter. And so we need to pray for them, remember that need, remember that family. And let's pray for our church that God would just uh, continue to lead us in the way he wants us to go, that he would open the doors for us to get back into his house soon and worship together. But until then, that we not draw uh, distant from him, we draw closer to him and we realize we need him more than ever before. And we put our trust and our hope and our faith and confidence in him. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Pray for these needs. You pray, please pray with me at home. Pray for the church and any other needs that you may be aware of. Uh, you, God knows all about them. Take them to the Lord because uh, James 5 is still very true, friends. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It always pays to pray. So, Lord, we're coming before you this uh, day to thank you, Lord, for another day you've given us. We, may we not take it for granted, Lord. You saw fit to wake us up and breathe the breath of life into our lungs for a new day and give us hope and promise and opportunities that this day is filled with. And I pray, Heavenly Father, as we approach this day, Lord, we we would uh, purpose in our hearts to bring glory and honor to your high and your holy name, to thank you for all that you've done as we come before your throne to ask you for your continued help. We're praying for Brother Ernie Smith, Lord, and Miss Anna Jean. We're sorry for what he's going through, but we're glad, Lord, to know uh, and to believe in the, by the truth of your word that he's not going through one moment of this alone, that you're right there with him. And I pray your presence and your power would be present in his life, Lord, and just very obvious to him and to his wife and to his entire family. And I pray, Lord, you would accomplish your will in his life, whatever that it is, Lord. We're trusting it into your hands and praying you would accomplish your will in his life and give his family, Lord Jesus, and his wife uh, strength to, uh, to trust in you through it all. And we're praying for David Hines, Lord. You know what he's going through. We've already seen how you've been at work in his family, how you've helped his son Caleb overcome that surgery and recover, and how you've uh, just provided for them, Lord, with the new house and, and how you're not done providing. And we're praying right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would touch him and help him. And like Brother Ernie, if it be thy will, that thou would heal him and make him whole, for we know thou art able. And we pray, Lord, that you would just give his family more confidence and trust in you, Lord, and draw them closer to you through this, Lord. And may your power and your presence be manifested in these lives and in these needs. We're asking right now, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. And we're praying for our church, Lord, that you would watch over our entire church family, Lord. I can look through the uh, pews and see the faces that would be there, and I'm praying for every one of them this morning, Lord. May you be with them, and may you bless them, and may you encourage them, and may you uh, see them through this day and through this time in our lives, Lord, that we would not uh, come through it, Lord, more distant, but we'd come through it, Lord, uh, closer to you, Lord, with a greater desire in our hearts to serve you and thank you for all that you've done and are doing. Bless our church, Lord. Bless all the needs that the body represents, Lord. And just, uh, Heavenly Father, uh, just work through us and use us, Lord. Now I pray you bless this service, the songs that will be sung. Lord, I pray you bless your precious and holy word as we look to it today. And I'm praying for strength from on high, Lord, to share the words that you've placed upon my heart about you being the light. And I pray you bless, Lord Jesus, to remain with this service. Bless everything that's said and done, that it would lift you up. And please send a blessing from on high, a holy anointing, for the message we would try and preach that you gave us today. In Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. So we're going to cut away for some songs, and we'll come back in a few minutes and share with you God's word. But God bless you until then. Once I was bound in sin's dark prison. No one around could lift the blame. I had no hope, no cause for living. But then Jesus came. Chains of 
sin and shame He wrote my name Way up in glory Since Jesus came He broke the chains In the tomb he lay Such a cold dark prison Into all the world All man death he seemed to reign Then Mary cried My Lord is risen From death he came He broke the chains He broke the chains Oh sin and sorrow He broke the chains sin and shame He wrote my name way up in glory Since Jesus came He broke the chain Good morning everyone and before we start the service uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. I hope all the mothers out there today have a wonderful day. May God bless you and, and just be with you and be near to you and uh, shower you with his blessings. And uh, I wish I could personally wish my mom a happy Mother's, Mother's Day, but she's at home now. She's not struggling anymore, and we thank God for that. And though I miss her with all my heart, um, I hope she knows how much I love her and she meant to me in this life. And if you have your moms, you have a chance to let them know how much you love them and how much they mean to uh, mean to you in your life. I want to just read one verse from Proverbs chapter 31. Uh, verse 10 says this about the value of a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? And it goes on all the way down through uh, verse uh, 28. I encourage you to read the rest of those verses. I don't want to take time to read them all this morning. But I was blessed to not only have a mom, but to have a godly mom. And everything that says in here about the virtues of a godly woman held true to my mom. And let me just encourage you, you want to be the best mother or grandmother you can be? Be a godly mother a godly grandmother. And I'm thankful for uh, my mom. I'm thankful for the wife of my children. Uh, thankful for the mom of my children, my wife, Miss Marcy. She's a good godly woman, and I appreciate her and thank God for uh, her motherhood that she's shown to our children. So happy Mother's Day to all of you, and we'll get on with the service right now. First of all, I would like to wish all the mothers out there happy Mother's Day. And while I was praying a couple of days ago, God gave me another song, and I've been singing it ever since. So, on the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above on the wings of a dove. When troubles surround us, when evils come, the body grows weak, the spirit grows numb. When these things beset us, He doesn't forget us. He sends down His love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends His pure, sweet love, a sign from above on the wings of a dove. When Noah had drifted on the flood many days, he searched for land in various ways. Troubles he had some, but wasn't forgotten. He sent him his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow-white dove. He sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above 
on the wings of a dove. When Jesus went down to the river that day, he was baptized the usual way. And when it was done, God blessed his son. He sent him his love on the wings of a dove on the wings of a snow white dove he sends his pure sweet love a sign from above on the wings of a dove a sign from above on the wings of a dove I hope you have a blessed weekend. I miss you all. I love you. Stay well. Can't wait till we can hug again. Bye.
and trust is very encouraging to you. I well, thank you for praying for these services and let's continue to pray that God would use them to help somebody that hears or, or is able to watch them. And I want to thank you for praying for me. And uh, we want to look at John chapter 8. I want to read verse 12 to you just in a moment. But before we do that, I want to pray over God's word. Father, we thank you for this day and for this wonderful and blessed opportunity, Lord, to look to your word. And Lord, I'm praying that you would look past my faults and shortcomings and find a way to use me, Lord. Empower me to preach your truth and send your holy anointing on everything that's said and done that will bring glory and honor to your name. Accomplish your will in our lives and send the message out you desire to be sent. Uh, sent. And I'm praying, Lord, that you would uh, open our hearts and our eyes to your truth. May we be receptive to what the Holy Spirit has to say. May you move your children closer to yourself. May you help those that don't know you understand their need and your great love. Now, Lord, you would just bless and use this service and bless and use this sermon for the purpose, Lord, as you see fit. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So John chapter 8, verse 12 says this. Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. And if you follow me, you won't walk in darkness, but you'll have the light of life. And I just want to ask you, all those who've ever experienced God in your life, what is it like when He shines His light down in your life? Everything looks different. 
The sun looks brighter. The sky looks more blue. The flowers have more deeper color. Uh, the love that uh, you have for each other, for your spouse, or for your children, looks brighter and better and, and, and more uh, glorious than it ever did before. When God's light shines in your life, things are never the same. Never the same. And so he says here, Jesus says, I am the light. Not just the light, but the light of the world. And he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And he says that right after a, a really profound uh, story takes place in the verses just preceding that. Let's go up and look at um, verse 3 and read down to 12 and see what it says. And it says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? And this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. You see what happens here? The, his detractors, those who wanted to trip him up, those that were jealous of who that he was and what did he claim to be and, and the attention he was getting and taking away from the religious leaders, they tried to trip him up and, and Jesus, Master, we brought one to you that's guilty of adultery. We found her in the very act. Moses said we should stone her. What do you say? And Jesus didn't address the women. Jesus shined his light upon their life. And he stooped down like he hadn't heard them. And he wrote in the sand. And wouldn't you like to know exactly what he wrote in the sand? But see, Jesus is all-seeing and all-knowing. And Jesus understanding who they were and what they had done and, and the things that they had done in their own lives they wouldn't like to have publicized or known about. And I'm quite sure that some of the things he wrote in the sand that got their attention. And I'm pretty sure instead of being uh, all hot and bothered and ready to stone this woman, all of a sudden they started looking within their own selves. And when they looked within their own selves and saw their own selves reflecting whatever Jesus had written in the sand, all they could do, all they could do is walk away. Because as Jesus shined his light into their life, he said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And we see what they did. They walked away. And they left a woman standing in the midst. And verse 10 says, And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, Jesus didn't come to rub her sin in her face. And Jesus didn't come to rub our sin in our face. Uh, Jesus came so that she could have a way to get out of her sin and get out of her situation and see life in a different light. And he came so that we could get out of our sin and out of our situation and see life in a different light. And he said, I don't condemn thee either. Go and sin no more. She got a get out of jail card, if you will. And he said, go and don't do this anymore. Learn from this. Allow the light, uh, uh, my light, to shine in your life and learn from this and go with a different prospect ahead of you in life. And, uh, and aren't you thankful for that? How that God gives us a new lease on life when we turn to Him. When we turn to See, we're not, we're not uh, sinners because of the acts we do or the behavior we, we engage in. It's because uh, that, we're, uh, that doesn't make us sinners. That doesn't make us sinners at all. But because we're sinners and lost without Him, without His light shining in our life, we engage in these things. And I, I hope and I pray that no one's been down the road this woman's been down. But if you have, rest assured, you can go to Jesus and allow His light to shine in your life. And you don't have to live in that. You don't have to stay there. You, you're not doomed by your actions. You can get a new lease on life if you turn to God and allow Him to shine His light in your life. And Jesus told her these very profound and powerful words. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. 
And then Jesus says what I read to start with. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. See, look at what we're told here. We're told here in these scriptures, we're informed about Jesus. And this is one of the things I want to try and tackle in my uh, message today. The world has painted a picture of Christ, the one that we love and serve uh, with pleasure and voluntarily, the one that uh, proved his love for us beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, the world has painted the wrong picture of him. And I hope that we can see as God's light shines on the word and God's light shines, I pray, on this message. I hope we can see the picture that needs to be painted, that the scriptures bear out. It says here that uh, uh, this woman who was committing adultery found in the very act. She was not too bad for Jesus to turn to, to help. She was not too bad to have a little talk with Jesus, to have an audience with Jesus. Though her accusers were ready to stone her, though her accusers wanted to use her to trip up Jesus, she was not uh, out of sorts uh, for Jesus to communicate with. I'm so glad that the outcasts are received by He who shines His light into our life. Uh, we see here that he's a friend of the sinner, a friend of those who are making mistakes and making, uh, making uh, uh, bad decisions in their life. That doesn't prevent Jesus from coming to them. He was a friend of the sinner. Those who have clearly behaved and acting and doing wrong. He loves you. <laughs> he loves you so much he died for you. He died for me. He brings light to uh, the, the, our lives and our behavior and our actions. I guess he confronts us in the mirror with our own selves and who that we are. He shines light into that. Helps us understand what's important and helps us understand what's significant in this life. And friends, this life is about a whole lot more than what we have. This life is about a whole lot more than, than uh, the things, the materials that we accumulate in this life. I've done uh, two funerals in the last two weeks. And I can tell you, life is about a lot more than the material things. Life is about uh, people, and it's about relationships, and it's about memories that we create, and it's about uh, the important things we can celebrate with one another. And life takes, uh, life takes on so much more meaning when God's light shines into our life and helps us to see that. And friends, what I want you to know is the most important relationship that we'll ever have or establish in our life is with Jesus, the Son of God. I love my Miss Marcy. She means the world to me. She's been my right hand and my right leg since I've been having some health issues. And I thank God for her. And as much as I love her, God's done so very much more for me. God's brought her to me. I have to think, if we love the gift, how much more do we have to love the giver, the gift? I love my children, my precious son Joey and Caleb. They mean the world to me. They've done so much for me and they bring me so much joy in my life. But friends, how can I love them more than he who gave them to me? I can't. And now, yep, you know, you know where I'm going. I'm a papa. That's Marcy's grandma, Nana. Boy, do I love that little Jacob. And oh, how I look forward to meeting Miss Leah Rose, our granddaughter, who'll soon be here, God willing. And I love them. I just it seems like when I search my heart, I couldn't love them anymore. But if I love them, friends, how much more ought I, how much more ought we to love the giver of life's greatest gifts? And as great as all those things are, friends, none of those things are as great as what God gave to me, just like he gave to this dear woman who had been brought to him, found in the very act. He gave her a new lease on life. He gave her a new hope and told her, go on your way. Don't do this anymore. Go, go and sin no more. And I'm so thankful the day that I came to a church, the day that I came to an altar, the day that I bowed on my knees. And oh, my accusers could have said so many things about me. But you see what? No one had to say anything because Jesus knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And He's so glad to shine His light into our life, to point out the things we're doing that are wrong, that are mistaken, the assumptions or the conceptions we have that are out of line with the truth. And open our eyes through His light shining in our life to the truth. And I'm so glad for that. And I'm, I'm so glad for these scriptures. I'm so glad that Jesus, I found out, is true in my life. I'm glad that uh, uh, He's proven Himself true to His word over and over again when He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I want to encourage you, friends, if you're a child of God, if, you're, if you've experienced God and, and know Him as your personal Savior, what's He tell us? He tells us not to walk in darkness. 
Now we're going to make some mistakes along the way, but it ought not to be our nature. We ought not to walk in darkness. We ought to walk in light. Light of knowing how much He loves us and demonstrated His love for us. We ought to walk in light. And not just any light. What's He call it? You shall have the light of life. Boy, I'm so glad that Jesus lit up my life. And I hope I'll never ever get over that. And I'm praying you're just as glad that Jesus lit up your life. I want to share with you what 1 John 1 and 5 says about this. 1 John 1 and 5 says, Then this is the message we have heard of Him, and we declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. God is light, in Him is no darkness at all. You, you, you'll not find any darkness. There's nothing uh, confusing, no gray areas, no, no shady areas, no dark areas when it comes to God. John made it very clear. The message we have heard of Him, and we declare it unto you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness. It's very clear. Read God's Word. Find out just what His uh, plan for you is. Find out just uh, how He feels about things, and, and get to know Him for who His Word says that He is, and not who the world says that He is. The false picture that's painted out there by so many today. Listen to what Isaiah 9 and 2 says. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Boy, isn't that precious. The people that walked in darkness, this lady who had taken in the very act, she walked in darkness. Me, before I came to God, I walked in darkness. You, before you came to God, you walked in darkness. You may be out there today, you've never come to God. You've never uh, had your time with Jesus and experienced Him in a personal way. And you may be walking in darkness. And what does uh, Isaiah say? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Oh, how I would that people would see the light of God's love, the light of life, as uh, uh, John put it here. They would see that today. And it says, And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Friends, that says a whole lot, and I don't want to get into it all. But I'm so glad that we that live here in this land, with uh, waiting ahead of us, the prospects of our life drawing to an end one day. As I said, I've had two funerals in the last two weeks, and they were very challenging for the families, and they were uh, not the easiest funerals to do, given the circumstances we have at our time right now because of this uh, pandemic going around. But we're all subject to what uh, Proverbs talks about. I know that will bring me to death, the house that's appointed for all the living. I think that's 30 and 23, I think. Um, we're all subject to that. And seeing that we're all subject to that, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath a great light shined. And I'm so glad that God's light shined in my life. And I know that whenever I take my last breath, it won't be goodbye forever, but just so long for a little while. And I will inherit uh, that eternal inheritance that God's prepared for me. Over in John uh, 14, where he said, uh, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. One day, friend, that promise will be mine, and it will be yours, because the great light of life, the light of God, has shined in our lives, and we thank God for that. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 5. It tells us a little bit more about this light. Once it shined into our lives, uh, what that means to us and how that should impact us and affect us. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says this, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot. So it's going from the analogy of light, which we'll get back to, unto salt. And you see, if, if, if you have salt, and it's lost its ability to season, because salt will season and provides it a tank, a flavor. Then you put it in something and it's old and it has, no longer has its ability to provide tang or flavor. It's not worth anything. And salt also can preserve for a certain period of time. Not indefinitely, but for a certain period of time. And so if you put salt in something to preserve it, and it's not able to preserve it, it's good for nothing. Friends, if we have the light of God shining in our life and we don't uh, follow Him and don't walk, uh, we forbid ourselves from walking in darkness and we don't walk in the light, uh, His light, friends, what good are we? God didn't save us to return into darkness uh, and change us to return into our old ways. He saved us and changed us so we can help people uh, see His light. 
see his light, the light of life that we've been talking about. And so it says, it tells us what salt is that's lost its savor or its flavor or built in preserve. It says, it's henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. And then he says, and Brother Mike Presno, Brother Mike, you shared this with us. We at Thursday nights, we have conference calls. I do three conference calls with the deacons and some of the preachers and, and some of the leaders of the church. And I do three conference calls with them. We give a little update on how people are doing. And we, we have special prayer for, for many of you uh, that, that we know what's going on in your lives. And we join together in prayer for you. And sometimes some of the fellows read the scripture. And, and at the end of the year, uh, before I got off the phone with Brother Mike, he said, he said, you're the light of the world. The city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. And that's what verse 14 says. We're, we're moving from the savor of salt to being the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. See, it says, you're the light of the world. If you put a city full of lights up on a hill or a mountain, it can be seen all around. As long as you have the ability and the clear skies to see, you can see them. And friends, we ought to be uh, lifting God up and we ought to be letting our light shine. The light that He shines into our lives, we ought to be letting that shine. How, how about that old, uh, uh, this little light of mine? I'm going to let it shine. There's never been a truer song, friends. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. If our light comes from the mighty light of life which comes from God, it's brighter than you ever possibly imagined. And friends, the work and dark, the worse and darker and more dire the circumstances seen around us, the brighter our lights shine and the more we need to shine. And if we're that city that's set on a hill, if we're that city that's set on a hill, they can't help but see our light setting up there. And then so, so before that city, it says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. See, you don't light a light to cover it up, to extinguish it, to, to, to uh, dim its impact. You, you, that's not why you light a light. You light a light so it can uh, enlighten the space around you and allow others to see. You light a light and you don't put it down low or you don't cover it up. You light a light and you put it on a candlestick so it can illuminate the space around you. I'm thinking about our New Year's candlelit services. What a good demonstration that is. How that we either out in the hall or here, we have one big candle that's lit. And that represents the light of life. This God, this light, it represents Him. And the room is dark. I mean dark, except for that one candle. And each one of the church members that wants to participate, they have a candle. It's not lit. And they bring their candle up. And they light it off the main candle. This light of life that shines into our light. The light of God. And they light it. And all of a sudden, they give a testimony. Or some just, uh, some just light their candle. And all of a sudden, the room's a little bit brighter. And then another person comes up and they light their candle and share a testimony. And the room's a little bit brighter and you can see a little further. And then we keep going so everyone who wants to participate has lit their candle. Before you know it, a room that was completely dark and, and, and void of light is now lighted up because the light from God's life and that candle is shining into our lives and it's lit our lives. Now our lives are lighting up. And because our lives are lighting up, uh, people all around us can see those that participate in the ceremony or the service and those that don't. And that's the way it is out in the world. When we allow the light of God's love to shine in our lives, uh, we brighten it and we illuminate the world all around us and folks can see a little bit better. And they can see a little bit more of the good things in life that come from God and God alone. And not only are the good things illuminated, the things that uh, the things ought not to happen, the behavior and acts and things that transpire that have no business happening, those things are illuminated and shown for what they are. So he says, Neither do men light a candle to hide it under a bushel, but to put it on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all them that are in the house. And then he tells us this as children of God. He tells us this. This is, this is God's, this is red letter in my Bible. This is the instructions directly from God. To me and to you as children of God, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you hear what that says? We're instructed by the Son of God to let our lights so shine before men. That means mankind. That's universal. Let our light so shine before mankind. And in so doing, they may see your good works. And if your good works are influenced by the light of life, the light of God shining in your lives, 
It will glorify the Father which is in heaven. So we light our light off this candle. And now our light has light in it. And we can see around us. And because of the light we have, others can see it that may not have light. And it shows us where to walk. And it shows us where not to walk. It enables us to know what to do. And warns us about what not to do. And consequences of those things. And this life, this life, with God's light shining in it, is more precious. And thank God for those whose light uh, of God shone in their lives that opened up a door to me. My dear precious mother and my sisters that, uh, that uh, took me to church. Uh, my brother-in-law, Brother Woody and Brother Dave Jackson that, uh, that shared God's light in their lives and illuminated the way for me. Thank God for those. And friends, I want to be someone who's going to let my light shine. I want to be someone who's going to let my light shine. If there's any good works in me, that it might glorify the Father which is in heaven. And help us that are the children of God that have experienced Him through a personal relationship to join together and brighten this world that needs light now more than ever before. So those that are without the light, without the hope, that they could turn to Him and find that light and find that hope. I'm thinking about the testimony of the, of the husband or the father of this three and a half year old little girl, the co worker, Brother Rich Marshall. And, and I shared that with you the other day. And, and, and what, his, uh, what his wife and his daughter said, or his wife and his, his, uh, his, uh, his, what he and his wife said, excuse me, I'm getting tripped up here. What they said is that they were praying. And they'd seen a difference. Their prayers and the prayers of tens of thousands across the world had been joining in for their little daughter. The difference that it had made it while that the tumor wasn't gone away, the spread of the tumor was gone, and the tumor was shrunk 75%. And they said, uh, God has been so good every day. We want to be about letting people know how good that God is. Even in the midst of the storm, a three and a half year little girl uh, diagnosed with a brain tumor and not a good diagnosis. They said God has been at work. We can see evidence of him been, being at work. A doctor said they never seen a tumor shrink so quickly and so, uh, so uh, evidently as this. God had been at work and they said every day they want to let the world know what God had done for them. That's letting their light shine before men, so they may see the good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Let's uh, flip over with, you, with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 talks about what happens, what happens when we allow this light to shine in our life. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 says this, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, and you know this story, it's a great story. He said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, oh, I'm paraphrasing. Some say you're Elias, and some say you're Jeremiah. And some say thou art John the Baptist, or one of the prophets. So they told what they'd heard from the people. And uh, who does the world say that Jesus is today? What picture is the world painting of Jesus, the one that we served, the one that proved His love for us by dying on the cross for us when we had no use for Him. I never get over Romans 5 and 8, but God commended His love towards us and though we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Who does the world say this Jesus is? And Jesus said unto them, okay, then let's get more personal. But whom say ye? Who do you say? I, this, I, you told me who the world says that I, the Son of Man, am. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter, being quick to respond here, said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, This is a knowledge you can't have any other way. To own me for who that I am. Simon said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus himself said, uh, You're blessed because you know this. And there's no way you could know this if it wasn't revealed to you by my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Pastor Joe, why are you sharing this? How does this fit into the rest of the scriptures and the message? You see, when the light of life, God's light, shined into Peter's life, he knew who Jesus was. He wasn't just a good man, just a good teacher, just a good rabbi, just a good carpenter, uh, just a good friend. He wasn't those things, although he was those things. He was so much more friends. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when God's light shines into your life, 
and you see the truth for what it is, you understand uh, Jesus is not who the world may be painting a portrait of today. Someone that's all uh, about taking away your joy, taking away your fun, holier than thou, uh, all these things. No, no, no. Just the opposite. He is our joy. He's the light of our life. And, and He is Christ, the Son of the living God. Friends, until you have that knowledge, you don't have any knowledge. Until you have that knowledge, you don't have this light, the light of life. And then look what he said about this knowledge in verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, what rock? Are you going to build a church on Peter? No. You're going to build this church. So that the gates of hell can't prevail against it on the knowledge that Peter had when God's light shined in his life and showed him that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. That knowledge, that knowledge is the rock that the church will be built upon. And we thank God for that. We thank God for that from the depths of our heart. So we're told we need to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And friend, I want to share with you, the more we do that, the brighter it gets. The brighter it gets, the more people can see good and evil. The more people can see the right choice and the wrong choice. The more people can see uh, what we ought to do and what we ought not to do. We let our light shine and it brings attention to the truth and allows people to have uh, uh, the ability to see in darkness the truth for what that it is. Think about the scriptures back in John chapter 8 where Jesus was brought the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. And they were looking to stone her, but they wanted to give him a chance to respond to what uh, the law of Moses said to do. And Jesus opened their eyes and shined a whole new light on this situation. And he helped them to see... Don't worry about other people's sins. Worry about your own. And his light shined. Boy, would I like to see what he written. Wouldn't you like to see what he written in the sand? You know what? When we come before God, he could write the same in the sand for any of us. But in lieu of convicting us and condemning us, he gives us a chance to find light and find life and find love through him. And thank God for that. Let's, let's read over what it says in John chapter 3. And I'm drawing to a close. Bear with me just a few more minutes. John chapter 3 uh, reading at verse 14. It says, And as Moses was lifted up in the excuse me, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting light. Life. Life. Listen to what it says in verse 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. See, we need to, as we go about letting our light shine before men, so they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven, we need to be about changing the mindset and the picture of Christ that the world has out there so prevalent today. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God sent Jesus and He shines His light into our life, not to condemn us, but to help us. Not just to help us, but to save us. To save us from ourselves, to save us from sin, to save us from uh, bad mistakes and bad decisions and, and, uh, and wrong acts that we might do. You say, preacher, I've already done those things. I had two before I came to Christ. When I came to Christ, He forgave me. And He cleansed me. And He covered me. And He clothed me in the righteousness of His own Son. So that when God from heaven would look at me, He wouldn't see me in my sins as I was. But He would see me clothed in the righteousness the wedding garments, if you will, of His Son. How glorious is that? How glorious is that? So we need to be about the church. One of the ways I believe that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, walk in this light and glorify our Father is to help change the perception that's out there. Now, I don't mean to sell God short. There will come a time when we will experience far more than condemnation if we don't get our our life right with Him, if we don't get our sins under His blood, if we don't lay down our righteousness and pick up His. He'll be coming back uh, over in John 14 when I read to you earlier. He said, just as sure as I'm going away, I'm coming back to receive you unto Myself. And if you're not one of His, so He can receive you unto Himself. Whoa, 
Watch out, he's coming back not as a lowly babe born in a manger the second time. He's coming back as a rightful king and, and endued by his father to be judge. And he'll judge us about what we've done with Christ, Christ in this life. And so he loves us enough to shine his light into our life and help us be prepared for that moment. And once we have his light shining in our life, uh, we turn to him and accept him and cry out to him, accept the work he did on Calvary in our place. And we're able to lay down our righteousness and pick up His? Is it too much to ask that we let our light shine before men so they may see our good works so we can glorify our Father who art in heaven? Because He didn't come to condemn. He came to help. He didn't come uh, uh, to sentence. He came to free. And we thank God for that. Let me read that again. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, when God's light shines into my life, he doesn't have to condemn me. All I've got to do is take a strong, hard, honest look in the mirror and what I see. See myself as I truly am, illuminated by God's light. And that's all the condemnation on I me. Mean, God doesn't need to add to that. That's what led me to an altar one day. And if we're honest with ourselves, if we're honest with who we are, what we've done, where we've been, that will condemn us. Shining God's light into our life will condemn us. And doing that, we need to own Him just like Peter did. Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Not just the Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen to what else uh, Jeremiah 29 11, one of my favorite scriptures, tells us about the picture we need to paint of Jesus Christ, the light we need to shine on Him. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. For I know the thoughts that I think of you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God doesn't want us to go through evil in our life. He doesn't want us. He didn't die so we could experience uh, condemnation. He died so we could experience salvation and freedom and liberty. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I found where the Spirit of the Lord is, not as there's just liberty. There's great liberty. When His light shines into your life and you accept that and turn to Him and you're free from the bondage and slavery of the old life, the old things, the things you thought you kept secret between just yourself and, and yourself. You're free from those things. And you're getting a new lease on life. And as you're getting that new lease, new lease on life, we need to do just like He told the woman. Go and sin no more. Let your light so shine before men. Paint a picture of me that's true and not what the world would have you believe. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Listen to what Exodus says about uh, God. I don't want to read the scriptures, but I'll tell you the story. Remember the children of Israel, they, uh, Israel, they escaped from Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea and they're into the wilderness and are wandering in the wilderness, not sure where to go, how to, how to go, what to lead them. And God sends them a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to light the way, to signal them how they ought to go, to lead them and guide them in the direction they ought to go. And God does the same with us. When Jesus left, He said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll send the comforter. And the comfort of the Holy Spirit abides with the very moment that I accepted Jesus as my Savior. The Holy Spirit made my heart his home and is there to lead me and guide me, direct me, just like that pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. So we never have to be lost. Now I'll share this with you in closing. I was reading in one of my commentaries this story that fits pretty well. It talks about a papa and his grandson. Papa and his grandson. No, this is not me. But I chose to use the word Papa instead of grandfather. So Papa was walking through the woods, away from the houses and stuff, with his grandson. They walked for, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, having a nice walk out in the woods, and they stopped. He said, Grandson? His grandson did, yes. He said, Do you know where we're at? He said, No, I don't know where I'm at, Papa. He said, Grandson, do you know how we got here? He said, No, Papa, I don't know where we're at. I don't know how we got here. And Papa said, well, grandson, I guess we're lost. And the young grandson looked at him and said, Papa, I may not know where we're at. I may not know how we got here. But Papa, as long as I have you, I'll never be lost. And that's the truth of the presence of the light of God's love 
shining in our life. We don't always know where to go and how to get there. The Holy Spirit is in us to help us, to lead us and to guide us. And if we allow it and go where it leads us and guides us to go, then we will, uh, we will glorify our Father who art in heaven. And the light around us will be a, a, enough to illuminate the paths of others so they may see our good works and glorify our Father. And choose to serve Him and accept Him on the road. The little boy said, Papa, I don't know where we're at. And I'm not sure how we got here. As long as I've got you, Papa, I'm not lost. And I want you to know, as long as we have God and His light shining in our lives, we'll never, ever, ever be lost. I pray that you would hear what God had to say in this service. I pray you look past my rambling, the times my tongue were tied, and hear what God has to say. And I pray as a people, as a church, that we would be about lifting up His name, bringing glory and honor to His name, not walking in darkness, but walking in His light, that we could do just what it said. Let people see the good works that we have in us, knowing they don't come from us, but they come from Him. And seeing those good works, we can glorify our Father who art in heaven. We can own Him as the Christ, the Son of God, as Peter did. And we can be about letting our light shine so we can light up the paths of others to come to know Him as He really is. Friends in church, may we do all we can to paint to the world the proper picture of Christ, that they may see Him in His true light, in His true light. And friends, let me just ask you, if you're listening, you're watching this video, and maybe you're not a child of God because you can't say there's a time and place where you knelt on your knees and cried out to God to come into your heart and life. You expressed your belief and trust in the work He did on Calvary. You accept that for the atonement for your sins, and you embraced Him, and you go and sin no more. That You've never had a time like that in your life. You're still walking in darkness. And you don't have to walk in darkness. You can turn to the light and own Christ, just as Peter described him there, uh, for who that he is, the Son of God, Christ, the Son of the living God. And I pray that you would do that if you haven't. And church, I pray you would help me to do all we can to lift him up and to let his light shine through our lives, that we may illuminate the path of others. And if you need uh, me to pray for you, you would like to talk to me, I just want to ask you, if you were here, I'd invite you to come to an altar and pray, but you're not here and you can't come to an altar. But if you want to call me, contact me, reach out to me in any way. I will do my level best through the help of Christ and through His Word to show you how you can let His light shine in your life. Heavenly Father, we come before you at the conclusion of this service to thank you for your blessings and love, to thank you for these uh, scriptures, Lord, and thank you for the truth in your Word. And Lord, as I prayed earlier that you would prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say. Now, Lord, having heard what you have to say, I pray you'd help us to have the courage and boldness to do the right thing with it and about it in our own lives. May you inspire and encourage the church to let their light shine for you, Lord. Let their light shine for you so the world can have the right picture of who you are. And Lord Jesus, I pray if there's those out there listening that have never accepted or experienced you, that Lord, they would be persuaded and convinced even today through the truth of your word to turn to you and reach out to somebody, reach out to me or another loved one uh, so we can show them and guide them through God's word. What it, what it, uh, what it feels and what it is like to have God's light shining in our lives. And these things we ask in the name of Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Church, God bless you. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. I hope you enjoyed this service and I pray you share it with somebody else. And uh, we'll try and be back again uh, Wednesday for our midweek service. But until then, God bless you. We hope to see you soon.